Daniel the sixth chapter. Just we come, come on back. They don't have to count the offer right now. They can count it later on. Daniel the sixth chapter. Look at verse number three. When you're there, say I have his word. Can't you find it? Look, I want you to find Daniel. Find Ezekiel. Or turn to your right. Or you can look on the screen. You'll see it right there. It says, Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because an excellent spirit was in him. Somebody said, An excellent spirit was in him. Now, watch this. This is called favor. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Somebody said, That's favor. I want to dig into part six of our series entitled Living on Another Level. Tell the person about it, tell them say, neighbor, when you live an excellent life, God can promote you to the next level. Tell somebody, tell them say, neighbor, oh neighbor, when you live a life of excellence, God has promised to promote you to the next level. Let's pray. Father of heaven, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Father, for the time of sharing your word. Father, as always, we pray that you would sink our minds up with your mind, God. Sink my thoughts with your thoughts, that I might declare to these your sheep, God, that which you have given us to declare. God, I pray that you would bless our time together. God, none of me, all of you. We thank you in the clarity. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Somebody say, man. You may have your seat in the presence of our Lord. I'm going to give you my first closing right now. I'm not going to be long. Just touch the person by them and say, uh-huh, we heard that before. <laughs> or even, some, even Mother Curry, she said, mm hmm Pastor, we heard that before. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. But I promise you, I ain't going to be long today. Because Pastor going to preach later on this afternoon. <laughs> We want, to, we want to save a little something for the afternoon, if y'all don't mind. Over the last few weeks, you all, it has been my desire to help you reconsider the shifting that God wants to do in your life. Because it is my belief that God wants to shift your life from where you are and take you to a higher level. Understand, sometimes you all, many of us live our lives on a low plane. The low plane many times look good, but here's the problem with living life on a low plane. Is that when you live life on a low plane or in a low level, when the rains come, you will incur great damage. Just a few days ago in Miami, there's, what's her name? Irma, Emma, Irma. Irma, so y'all already know, know her name. Hurricane Irma uh, impacted Miami and it hit it right there on its shores. Now, all of those who are living on the coastal area or those who are living on the low-lying areas, many of them receive flooding in their homes, in their businesses, and from what I have heard as of yesterday, many of them are still without power. But for the ones who live their life on their high level, it is also my understanding that even as of yesterday, their lights are on. Uh, their basements, their, I'm sorry, their homes did not flood. Yes, they had water, and yes, some of them had trees uh, were turned up, and some of them even had their, their backyards disarrayed, but their houses are still standing. What I'm trying to tell you is that many times when you hang out in the low places, on, when the storm comes in, and you will look up and you find that your life has been flooded out. Come on, come on. And the truth be told, many of us can look at our lives and what God has brought us through. And for many of us, uh, well, many of us have come through a period of rescue. In other words, God had to send help to rescue us from the things we had to go through. Well, let me ask you, anybody besides your pastor, have anybody ever had to have God send you somebody to rescue yeah. you? Yeah. 
But understand, when you live on another level, there's some things the storm cannot do to you when you live on another level. Now, you are saying, Pastor, well, if I'm up high, then a storm can blow me over. But understand, the, the, when you are in the eye of a storm, the storm does more damage in low-lying areas than it does to those who are sitting on the mountain. In other words, when the rain hits and all the turmoil hits where you are in the valley, when you are on another level, watch this now, you may incur damage, but the devil cannot give you as much damage as he would like you. Come on, but I mean, anybody that God has set you on a high place. Come on, say thank God for a high place. Now understand you all, one of the consistencies I have noticed uh, over the years is the moment you make a decision to improve the quality of life, there is going to be a contention, watch this now, with where you want to go and the place you left. Oh, you ain't talking back to me. I said, there is going to be a battle. Come on, class, say a battle. There is going to be a fight. There is going to be an all-out war between where you are and where you want to go. Pastor, what are you saying? I'm simply saying this. You have to make a decision that I'm going to leave where I am and go to the place where I believe God is sending me to. And in the midst of that decision, there is going to be a major war going on. Right. Pastor, what are you saying? The Apostle Paul declared over in Romans, the seventh chapter, and verse 21, Paul says, Paul says, I find then a law. Somebody say a law. Now, Pastor, what is a law? A law, watch this, a law is a principle of something that is consistent. Paul said, I find something that is consistent about my life. Paul said that when I would do good, watch this now, evil is always present. Come on, does anybody beside the Apostle Paul have that testimony? The moment you want to change your life from where it is and move to a different level, something comes up. The moment you tell God, I ain't going to ever do it again, opportunity show. Maybe it's just in my life. The moment you tell God, I'm going to live my life on a higher plane, something comes up in your life to cause a war, to cause a battle in your life, in our lives, to keep us from progressing to the place God wants to take us. In other words, every time I seek to improve my life, that old way of thinking begins to creep up to keep me or to try and regain control of my life. Can anybody be honest on this Sunday morning and testify so that your neighbor will understand it's not just them? That every time you made a decision to do something, that old way of thinking came back in your head. Come on, you don't believe it? Make a decision that I'm going on a diet. I guarantee you everything you like to eat will taste good. It's going to smell good. Come on, man, listen. Listen. <laughs> Brother Rice, the other day, I, I, I had decided, you know, I said, you know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go back to the gym. I'm going to rejoin the gym. I was telling somebody the other day, I, I said, you know what? Uh, preacher, I told him, I said, the reason I didn't join the gym is because I didn't have that level of commitment. Now, I got weights at my house, I got a treadmill at my house, I got a sit-up bench at my house, and I don't use it. So my thinking is, why spend all that money going to a gym when the last time I joined, I didn't go? Those folks got all my money, and I still didn't go. But watch this, the moment I decided I'm going to change my lifestyle, in the middle of my thought process, I had a craving for Reese Cups. <laughs> Anybody ever had a taste for Reese's Cup? Yes, yes, yes. Now understand, I'm not a Reese's Cup fan. But all of a sudden, I wanted some Reese's Cup. The problem was, I told Lady Carol. I came home yesterday, had a big old bag. Reese's Cups, 50, 50 Reese's Cups. Now you know, I bought by them best guy Reese's Cups. But the red, I said, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. But in my mind, I said, do it for the vine. Do it for the vine. Now, here, here it is, it's 10 o'clock. Now, understand, I, I'm aware that in one Reese's cup, 
there is 250 calories in one cup. Now, I know I don't want to go to Basil Philip on 250 extra calories. So I tell myself it's 10 o'clock, I don't want to eat it because in the middle of the night I'll eat it and I'll wake up and now I'll be, I have a sugar rush and I can't go back to sleep. I convinced myself to not do it. And then I wanted some water. But the fridge was past the Reese Cups. So with, with, with my smart self, I walked on the first time and thought, I, you know, I didn't see him. He was going, psst, psst. I'm like, I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Now, I could have kept going to the other way to get to the living room. I went back by the Reese Cups. And I heard one say, you hear me. Come on, anybody have food cards in the phone? Come on, y'all, come on, don't lie to church. I know some of y'all have food cards saying, hey. I heard it go, Psh. You hear me call? I'm calling you. Get one of me. And so I opened the bag. I pulled one out. I put the bag down. And I heard his friend say, I want to go too. <laughs> no, it was 50 in a bag. So the guy, I took them two and see my smart said, I put them on the couch. <laughs> I put them down right next to me. I said, the devil is like a blood of Jesus. Man, I was calling with angels. I was calling down fire from heaven. But that time my prayer wasn't working. So I said, I'm going to open up one. And how many folks are there if you just do one? That, that other opportunity is going to call you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. It's going to call you back to the place you were trying to go. And understand, any time you try, to make your life better. The enemy is going to try to cause a detour to bring back that old way of thinking to make sure you are never free from that old way of living. Well, let's consider Lot's wife. You recall in the book of Genesis, God told Lot, get your family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Hearing it, God said, I'm going to rain down fire and brimstone. Now listen, I'm not sure about y'all, but if God tell me I'm going to rain down fire and brimstone in Chicago, I ain't ever coming back. Y'all right. not talking back to me. Listen, if God told me he's going to rain down fire and brimstone in Dalton, I'm leaving everything. Come on, I'm going to leave the car, the house, and the lady care I'm going to go. Bless God, baby, bye. Come on, all that fell, save yourself. I know she's thinking, come on, y'all, no, God, I'm like, baby, please come, no, I'm out of there. Now, watch this. God told them to leave. Lot took his family, and Lot began to go on a journey away from the place God said he was going to destroy. Now, the Bible said, as they journey, that Lot's wife looked back. Now, the question becomes, what made someone look back on something that God said he was going to destroy. Understand the reason God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah is because they were a wicked nation, a wicked city. Come on. And God said because of their wickedness, I am going to destroy them. Now understand the word wicked came from a word in the Greek that means to be twisted. And what's keeping us from the best of God is because many times it is our twisted thinking that keeps drawing us back to the very place we said we were going to leave. And a matter of fact, if we can just testify to some of us who, who broke up with Ronnie, Bobby, Nikki, and Mike, we told God, I ain't ever going back. But the reason you went back is because what is the stronghold of that wicked thinking? Because listen, you can't just hurt me and I keep going back unless there is a stronghold from you over my life. Come on, how many of you have ever said you were not going to go back with somebody and find yourself back with the very person who caused you pain? The question is, what would make a man go back to a woman that he said had hurt him? What would cause a woman to go back and, and, and continue to date a man who she know don't mean him no good? Would it be or could it be that there is a stronghold of wicked thinking in your mind that says even though I know he or she has hurt me, watch this now, my desire to be with them outweighs the attempt or what it would cost me to leave them. I forgive it, somebody, somebody wrote a song says cheaper to keep her. But listen, I, I, I rather keep my mind 
even keep my money. Because if I got my mind, I can make some more money. Y'all ain't talking back to me. And some folk will stay in places God is telling you to move away from because you find it hard to go because there is a stronghold of the mind when God saying leave this place and you stay in the very place God told you to go. God said if when I want to shift your life and move you to a higher level, you have to be willing to go. Somebody shout go. Now understand with, with Lot's wife, the Bible said, when she turned, God turned her into a pillow of salt. All right, all right, all right. Now the question is, did she turn in her heart or did she turn in her head? Because sometimes you will turn physically, but in your heart you know I should be going. And some folks keep going straight, but in their heart they want to go back. The Bible said God, the Bible said man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Are you following me? And so what God is saying, I'm sure that God saw the heart of Lot's wife. Because watch this, she found more pleasure in the place where she was and was not willing to let it go, even though God told her he was going to destroy it. I wonder how many things in our life that God told you that it's the wrong thing to do. How many places do we go when we know God told us it's the wrong place to go? But we tell God, I love this thing, God, more than I love you. But is there anybody in the house who knows that it is better to please God than to please myself? Would you push the person by your time and say, you better please God before you please yourself? Baby, you be surprised if the amount of people who spend most of their time trying to satisfy themselves, who spend most of their time trying to get their own feeling on and tell God, God, but you don't know how I feel. God, you don't know what's going on in my flesh. God, you don't know what's going on in my emotions. But God said, if you turn your heart over to me, baby, I know how to change your mind. Is there anybody in the house who knows that God knows how to change your mind? The Bible said, when a man's ways please God, God said, I'll make your enemies to be at peace with you. So understand you all that as we attempt to live our lives on this next level, we also need to be mindful, watch this now, of the traps the enemy will set along the way. Oh, how many folk from the devil will always set traps up for you? Come on, maybe it's just your pastor. Every time I decide I'm going to let some things go, I find myself running into a trap. Any, anybody besides me ever made up in your mind that, God, I'm going to live my life this way, and along the way, you run into a trap. Push the person by the camera and say, beware of traps. See, understand you all, every time God wanted to advance the life of Joseph, Joseph had to be willing to get over that next hurdle. That's what you're saying. Understand, when God gave Joseph a dream, it was that dream that brought Joseph the trouble. Y'all missed that. How many folks in the house have God given you a dream? Come on, have God given you a vision? Have God given you a de desire? You must understand them that the only reason the enemy is attacking your life the way he is is because the devil does not want your life to progress to the next level. But when you push the person by your tongue and say, neighbor, it don't matter what the devil does, my life is still going to the next level. Understand, when they put that boy in a pit, Joseph could have thought that life was over as she knew it. When they put him in the pit, he could have said, God, why did you leave me out here like this? When they put him in the pit, he could have said, God, I thought you told me that I was going to be over nations. God, when they put me in the pit, God, I thought you said that you were going to make me the head and not the tail. Listen, if anybody in the house, when God gave you a dream and God gave you a vision, when God told you what he was going to do for you, you are going through does not look like what God said. But would you encourage the person by you and just tell them, neighbor, it don't matter what it looks like, God's still going to do what he said he would do. Listen to everything that boy had to go through. Listen, being put in a pit, but God sent somebody alone and they fought him. It is just like God that the, when the enemy comes in to jack your life up, God will send somebody alone to bring you out. I, I want you to encourage somebody that the next time the devil tells you that God has left you alone, baby, God's going to send you a miracle to bring you all the way out. Is there anybody in the house who can 
not predicated on me having on how many good and good things I do. You should be shot right there. I said, God bringing you out is not predicated on the goody goody things that you do. Back to how you know. Check out the children of Israel. The same folk that were murmuring, complaining, wanting to go back to Egypt. Watch this. God still made a way. God still brought them out. And watch this. Pastor Mars, you the part that impressed me. See, we think the miracle was the water coming up. Yeah. That wasn't that was that was a miracle, yes. But here was the miracle I, I rediscovered. Okay. The miracle was they came out two million folk on dry land. Yeah. Now watch this. Generally, when water is gone, there's still mud. Yeah. 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 They could not bring two million folks in chariots in mud. So the Bible says God sent an east wind. Woo! Good God Almighty. And baby, I came to prophesy into somebody's life and tell you God is getting ready to call the winds to blow in your life. Come on, and carry the person in front of you and tell them that God is blowing in your life. Come on. Tell them, tell them, tell them that God is blowing in your Tell them, come on. Tell somebody. God is blowing right now. The winds are blowing. 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 The devil is telling you the devil is going to catch you. The devil is telling you you can't cross over that small place. But I can't even tell you, baby, that the winds are blowing. And God is drying up every muddy place. He's drying up every swamp in your life. And God is going to make sure you cross to the place He wants you to cross over to. Encourage everybody. You can tell them, say, You will get there. You will get there. Tell them, say, You will get there. You will get there. Some of y'all afraid. Come on, tell them, say, You will get there. You will get there. You Come on, tell somebody. You will get there. You I don't care what your enemies say. I don't care how it looks in the metro. Baby, you will get there. Yes, you I came and tell every naysayer. I will get there. Oh, I'm going to the next level. Oh, God, don't put me on a high place. Why? Because he said it. He decreed it. He declared it. It shall come to pass. Somebody shout, it is so. It is so. The clarity say it is so. Let, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. God, listen. It is in fact the desire of God to have your life more in another level. It don't mean that or suggest that where you are now is bad. Yeah. 
just got us. Too young to go. Gotcha. Come on. I ain't playing no funeral. I'm not writing no obituary, bless God. If death catch me, it's going to catch me. I'll be shot. Come on. Some of y'all looking forward to dying so you can get your blessing. Jesus said, I'll bless you with houses now, with land now, with wealth now. Somebody who believes, somebody shout now. He said, in this life, and in the life to come. Which means I can live a good life right now. Now, Savannah, folk don't talk about you. Look, it bothers me if folk dog me out and I'm broke. But you think I care what they say? Y'all ain't talking. You think I care what they say if my pockets are loaded? I'm gonna tell them, I'm gonna tell them, say, let them laugh if they want you. I mean, you don't care. Let them laugh if they want to. They don't bother me. Let them laugh. Let them stare. I don't care. Because I'm a child of God. And I've been made free. Somebody say, I've been made free. I've been made free. Listen, if, if I'm more than like, you think Donald Trump care if y'all like it? He don't care. That boy is seven times a billionaire. He don't care if you have a like him. He don't care. Because money talking, well, you know the words. Come on, money talk. Come on, somebody. You can say what you want to say. That's the market. If I'm loaded, I don't care what they say. Come on. If I build a pay, I don't care what they say. My body's here, I don't care what they say. Because my life is evidence of the hand of God on my life. And so your biggest job is to get over folk talking about you. But Tracy, let them talk. Let them take their boat and they, they, they pull seven to the pool house and keep talking. What are what, what the pool ninjas talking? I'm going to the bank. I'm going to cash my check. And buy myself a good piece of chicken. Yeah. Uh -huh. Woo! Glory to God. I know y'all won't say, I want a good, I want a good juicy chicken breast. I want a dripping juice tender. So when I buy these squirts, some good, some good beans and rice, glory to God. Almost all right, pop out though. Glory to God. I'm done. Y'all listening? 